Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is 1982's Masters of the Universe He-Man and Battle Cat in four minutes or less. Released in 1982, He-Man was the barbarian with bangs face of the franchise, and Battle Cat was his valiant sidekick and also his ride to work. He-Man and Friends were a five and a half inch series of figures which stood above the three and three quarter inch Star Wars, G.I. Joe, and MASH toys that were dominating the toy aisles. Mattel even marketed the Masters line as, quote, the power that separates the men from the toys, positioning themselves as the bad boy toy line of 1982. The entire line was designed to be efficient in its use of molds and accessories. Sculpting was unique for a toy line in 1982 with respect to the beefcake physiques, hairy underpants, bracelets, and boots. Luke Skywalker may have a lightsaber, but hokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a pair of these guns by your side. <laughs> While there was an abundance of parts and armor recycling, the minimal paint apps helped to reinforce the unique aspects of the individual characters. For instance, few kids realized that Faker and Prince Adam were just repainted He-Man figures, and that Stinkor was just Merman after he'd spent the summer following the Grateful Dead on tour. Fun fact, that smell is patchouli oil. Battle Cat was also a recycled mold, having previously been a regular colored tiger in Mattel's Big Jim toy line. That means that for every Battle Cat they sold, every single dollar was pure profit since the molds had already been paid for on the success of the Big Jim toy line. Everyone remembers Big Jim, right, Greg? Big Jim, no? All of his friends, Big Jack, Big Jeff, Big Josh, Dr. Steel, no? I'm not making this up, it was a very successful line of 10-inch action figures. It ran from 1972 to 1986. Where's my Michael Bay Big Jim movie? He-Man has a swiveling, squishy rubber head, shoulder joints, and kind of ball and socket hips that- Shall it go, the master of the universe? ...that rely on a heavy rubber band to keep them intact. This is something that causes a lot of He-Man figures to have trouble standing up these 30-some-odd years later as those rubber bands have deteriorated. He also has a spring-loaded waist swivel, allowing him to punch the crap out of anything standing within arm's reach. While He-Man has some posability, Battle Cat is a hollow, unarticulated shell of plastic. He is sculpted in a semi-aggressive posture with his mouth agape and what is either a roar or a yawn depending on where you play takes you. Hey, for me, my toys weren't always fighting. I preferred a character-driven play structure motivated by complex, multifaceted portraits that weren't dependent on the archetypes fed to me by the cartoons. My toys fought, yes, but they also slept in tiny beds made out of Kleenex. He-Man comes with all your standard barbarian weapons like a riveted shield, an axe, and the most powerful sword in the universe slash key to Castle Grayskull. He sports a gray, Greg, do you say bro or manzir? Manzir? He sports a gray manzir, which I can only assume serves to protect his sternum and clavicles because that's all it's covering. Your nipples are showing. Battle Cat is far more battle ready with his helmet and full body plate nail armor. While full body plate mail armor might seem like a hot and heavy choice for the battlefields of mostly deserted, smoking, crater-filled Eternia, it does keep He-Man's naked, sweaty legs from touching his fur all day. He-Man and Battle Cat are two of the best figures from the original Masters of the Universe line and toy icons to this day. Both figures are must-haves for every action figure collector, so if you have an opportunity to acquire them at a reasonable price, buy them. And if you see two, leave one for the next collector.